Hello, my name is Michael Rask. I'm a major in cybersecurity, and today I will be giving a presentation on computer safety. In this era, almost every single person has a computer and has access to the internet. Even though the internet has helped us greatly, no one thinks about the dark side of the internet. For example, in 2022, there were 560,000 new pieces of malware that were detected each day. Every minute, four companies fall victim to ransomware attacks. This has led to personal data being stolen, data held at ransom, and many personal computers being infected with malware. In this presentation, I will be talking about a guide to computer safety. Hopefully, this presentation will change the way you use your computer and browse the internet. The best way to educate people about a problem is to spread awareness of current issues that we are facing in today's society. Today, I will be presenting information that I hope you will use and change the way you use your computer. I will be talking about seven different aspects of computer safety, which include privacy. All of our internet traffic is being tracked and we need to make sure that we are reducing the amount of trackers when using the internet. Malware can exploit our privacy and especially our private data, which needs to be kept secure. The use of antivirus software will help combat malware after a computer is infected. The amount of scams are rising with the amount of people who are on the internet. It is very easy to be scammed on the internet and we need to know what to look out for so we do not fall victim. Our passwords are like the keys to our house. We need to make sure that we use strong passwords that cannot be easily cracked or stolen. Two-factor authentication, known as 2FA, is a secondary security measure when signing into our accounts online. When going to websites, we need to make sure that we are visiting the websites in which we intend to visit. If not, personal data could be stolen. Lastly, I will be talking about what to do if you get attacked. Our internet privacy matters more than you think. So what are internet cookies? Web browsers and search engines save small amounts of data called a cookie. They make ads more relevant and better the search results, as well as saving login credentials if you choose. Have you ever shopped for a product then went to a completely different website to see ads of that same product? This is an example of you being tracked. To help combat this issue, you want to disable cookies, which will prevent websites from storing data. Also, if you have the option to do not track, you want to check that box as well. Protecting yourself online is crucial in protecting your privacy. Therefore, I recommend everyone to quit using Google Chrome and Google Search Engine. Google is a good search engine, but when it comes to privacy, it is very questionable. I personally use Firefox with DuckDuckGo as the search engine. I recommend others to do the same as Firefox has better security features and DuckDuckGo prides itself on private searching, tracker blocking, and states that they do not collect or share any personal information. Next is what is a VPN? A virtual private network protects your online presence by creating a private network from a public internet connection. It hides your real IP address and instead uses an IP address that is connected with a VPN server. It can hide browsing history, location, de your devices, and web activity. But your internet service provider will be able to see when you use a VPN, but will not be able to see your data. This is because data is held within the VPN service provider. Though, law enforcement can contact your VPN service regarding your data logs if they suspect illegal activity. So there's a few different types of malware which can affect your computer. These can be accidentally downloaded when you download files from the internet. For example, if you download pirated software or if a legit software vendor got hijacked. These include Trojans, ransomware, spyware, key loggers, and adware. Trojans, such as the Trojan horse, disguises itself as something else. Trojans are more commonly found on pirated software sites. Ransomware, which I have included a picture on the screen, which will, you will most likely get, encrypts your data into file formats that you cannot access. You either have to completely start over or you have to pay the ransom. You should always have a backup of your personal data that is on your computer. 
If you do not and get hit with ransomware, you will pay the ultimate price. Spyware spies on your every move, what websites you go on and what you do on your computer. Keyloggers are a form of spyware which record the keystrokes of your keyboard. Say you went to your online banking and typed in your credentials, all of which will be logged and sent to the attacker. Adware is a form of malware but infects web browsers and search results with ads. The use of antivirus software is crucial to stay protected from malware. With antivirus, it can only detect malware after the, internet, after the incident has taken place, so frequent malware scans are recommended. So now we'll be talking about scams. Internet scams are a very big problem in today's world. Though I do not know the details, one of my relatives got their checking account drained by an internet scammer. A couple different scams to look out for are phishing scams. This attack is a form of social engineering which exploits humans. Mainly, phishing comes in the form of emails that ask you to click a link or download an attachment. These are usually targeted attacks where an attacker will pose as someone who they are not. When receiving a suspicious email asking you to open a link or look at an attachment, you want to look at the grammar and spelling of the email. But most importantly, you want to pay close attention to the address in which it was sent from. If you get a legit looking email, for example, from PayPal, it will never be sent from a Gmail account. 95% of the time, you will be able to tell if a legitimate email was sent just from looking at from the sender. If you get a message from an unknown person, it is best that you do not respond and block them you could be entering into a money scam and fall victim to losing money. This is the same with dating scams. As you do not physically know who's on the other line of the message, you have to make sure you are talking to the person that is in the picture. So passwords are our way to gain access into our accounts. This means that they are not to be easily guessed. This comes into play with brute force attack to gain access into an account. The bad actor will run a series of known passwords against your account login to see if there is a match. If there is a match, the attacker will know the password to your account. Data leaks are another way in which a bad actors can know your login credentials. So how do we prevent this from happening? First, never reuse passwords. If one password is found, the bad actor will try the same password on different accounts. Next, we want to create passwords following a few guidelines. The best way is to not use words. Now, this can be difficult to remember and type in, but the table shown for the second password shows that it would take about 34 years to crack. We also want to use a combination of numbers, letters, and symbols. We also want to have a minimum of eight characters, but more than 12 is better in the case of a password attack. With passwords, it is the only one line of defense. The second line of defense is two-factor authentication. Well, what is 2FA? 2FA is a secondary line of defense against unauthorized users trying to log into your account. Once you enter your password, it will send you a text message or email with a code that you will need to enter to be able to gain access to your account. I recommend that you enable 2FA on every one of your accounts to ensure that you are fully protected even when someone else knows your account credentials. When talking about account credentials, we need to make sure that we're on the actual websites that we intend to be on. This leads us to go into the next topic of phishing websites. A phishing website is a legitimate looking website that a bad actor has set up in order to steal account credentials and other information, including credit card numbers. In the next couple of slides, I will be showing you a phishing website of Netflix that I actually created. In order to tell if you're on the correct website or suspect that you are on a fake website, you need to take a close look at the URL as seen by the image on the slide. If an attacker really wants to fake the page to look real, they will usually have one letter be off, which will make it look like you're on the legitimate website if you do not look close enough. Another form is where a legitimate website gets hijacked and the attacker redirects you to a phishing page. Now, let's take a look at the 
phishing Netflix page that I created. During the time creating this page, this is what the login page for Netflix looked like. If you look at the URL, we can definitely tell that we are not on Netflix.com. Lastly, I will provide a screenshot of what the bad actor will see on their end after you interact with the website. As I said, as my email or, user, or phone number, this is my username and the password, this is my password. So let's see what the hacker will, will see. This is what it looks like from the attacker's perspective. We can see that they are able to see the username and password of the credentials that were just entered. They will be able to see this and use this information to break into your account. In conclusion, I want to talk about what to do if you get attacked. And in this uh, screenshot here, we can see the user login ID is this is my username. And then the password is this is my password. So if you suspect that you downloaded malware or a virus, or that your computer started to act funny, you want to run a malware scan. If you do not already have an antivirus solution, download one now. I recommend Malwarebytes, which is free. I've tested the crap out of Malwarebytes, and I believe that this is the best free version antivirus you can get. They also have a paid version as well. If you realize that your personal information is leaked or your identity is stolen, contact and report it to local authorities. If you fall victim to a money scam, you should contact your bank and report it to your credit card company. If you believe that your social media accounts have been taken over, you want to see if there is any activity on them that you did not do. In every case, it is best to change all of your passwords to your accounts. So if the attackers did have your passwords, they will not be able to log in. With this information provided in this presentation, I hope that you will think more about your safety and privacy when using your computer and browsing the web. As time goes on, it's easier to accidentally install malware, fall victim into scams, and the amount of data you are leaving behind when online will always be present. Changing your habits of using your computer and while on the internet will help you prevent from being attacked.